Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're continuing work on our low poly stylized cottage. This time working on some atmospheric fog. Do check out the other playlists on my channel. You can also go to my website gabbit.co.uk which has all my free courses in order. Also if you like what I do then you can check out my new character course. It takes you right from nothing through to making a great game character. Okay so here's what we got up to last time and we're going to add a few more things to give it some extra atmosphere. So first of all, I think it looks really nice if it's got some environmental fog in there. And we're already in the world tab, so that's where we'll be adding it. And we'll use the volume of the world output. So with my 3D cursor in the shader editor, shift A to add shader, and there's principled volume there. We can bring that down below the background. I'll just bring this up slightly so we can see it all and hook the volume into the volume of the world output. Now immediately, it fills everything in. That's because the density is way too high. We can turn this down to, let's say, 0.02, I think, is roughly what I had it at. And that will work nicely. Now, I've heard lots of people have problems when they try and do this, and it might be the specification of your computer, particularly if you haven't got a graphics card or you've got a graphics card that's not quite compatible with Blender. So if things are going wrong here, check your density. If that's not working, it might be a bug and you might not really be able to use the fog very well. At this point, you might want to change the strength of the background just to add to the mood. I think that's better at 0.01. What I find helps as well is having some light coming out of the door and the cracks in the door. So we'll click on the side here and press H to hide. And that hides the side for us so we can get in the middle there. The other thing that's worth pointing out, if I drag this down and press full stop on my keyboard that will take me to the object that's selected and it's that plane that I've hidden and you can see that the eye there is grayed out if I tick it it comes back and that's another way of hiding objects so if I press shift right click and shift a to add light and then we'll add a point light in here and that's right on the wall so I'll just press G then X and move it back into the middle and let's bring the outliner back up so in the object data properties, let's turn the strength up to 100, let's say, and change it across to yellow. Now, if I come around to the side here, it's working quite well. I can see in to my door here, but it's made my bricks bright over here. I'm going to turn the power up a little bit more. So let's say 300. And we can start to see the effects of it on the tiles as well. And that doesn't make any sense because it's going through this object here and through the wall here. What we can do under the shadows is turn on contact shadows and that gets rid of that sort of bleed over the top there. The only problem is, notice when I'm moving around you can see a slight glow where the light is coming through the walls yet again. If I press G then Y and move it right near my door, because I want this light coming through slightly, you can actually see it through the walls. And I'm not completely sure what the problem is there. And I think it's just the limitation of Eevee and using fog in the scene and so forth. The workaround I've found is to actually delete that light and I'm just going to copy one of the windows instead. So I'll come to front view with my window selected, press shift D to duplicate and scale it up. Although its object center seems to be over here. So I'll just right click and set origin to geometry and then move it into the door and scale it up. Somewhere around there looks good. Let's just make sure it's not in the way. So I'll press G then Y to move it back a little bit and maybe scale it up just a bit more to make sure it's overlapping our door. So that's a lot better than having a point light. It's just having a simple plane in the background with this emissive material. It doesn't have to be the window copied. It can just be a plane with that emission on it. Okay, I'll press Alt H. That will bring back our side wall there. That's great. And we're certainly getting there. I'll just click away and see how we're getting on. Now, what really helps, I think, is a backlight in our scene. If you look up three point lighting, and I've got another video on that, which is probably worth looking at, but backlights are really excellent for adding that extra depth to your images. So if I come around to the back here and press shift right click there, shift A to add light and we'll have an area light this time. That's a sort of big square light. So if I press G to grab, you can see that there. You can click on this yellow thing here to point the area light to where you want it to go. And it actually sort of snaps to objects, which is helpful. So I'm gonna make this fairly big and bring it around to the bottom here. So we can't really see it so well. So I'll bring it a bit lower and I'll angle it up a bit more about there let's have a look around the front I think I want to have this as my sort of final angle somewhere around here so I'm going to press Control alt 0 to move my camera into this position it needs a little bit of extra moving but now I'm looking through my camera I'll just quickly go to layout mode to show you a bit more of what I've done there you can see the camera there and if you want to move the camera to the view then you press Control alt 0 
it moves the camera to your view. If I press zero, I can come out of camera view and see that camera. So let's go back to the shading workspace and let's move in again to the right position. It was somewhere around here, wasn't it? Looking up a little bit at the house and control alt zero to move the camera. And there we got our camera framed. I'll press zero to come out of camera view so I can zoom in easily. And I'll just come around and grab that light again so I've got it selected and go back to camera view and see the influence my strength is going to have. So let's change this to 500 to start off with. So it's nice and bright. Now we've got this cool glow coming from behind the cottage. I'll change the temperature of that. You can give it a really sort of weird greeny look if you want a Halloween look, maybe across the yellows. But I quite like this sort of cool blue look somewhere around here. I might reposition that slightly so you can see where it is here. If I press G to grab, I can move it across and just reposition it and maybe make it a bit bigger. And let's crank it right up to 3000 and just to see the effects that you can make. See this sort of soft glow that's coming around here? I think that looks really interesting. And really experiment. I'll turn it up to 6000 just to see what that looks like and push these things to see what happens and see what you like. If you need to go full screen, control spacebar will take you full screen and we can zoom in a bit to see the effects of that light. Okay, control spacebar to go back to your workspace and I think it was probably better around 3000. And we can play with that a bit more later. And if I come around to the back here, you can see it's not really working if I do a sort of circular view. It looks a little bit strange. So this is very much if you want just the front view from this side perhaps. So just watch out, think about how you're using your lighting. And you could always have some sort of strange glowing object here like a strange well that has some creature down it that gives off blue glowing light. So you've got to think about the lights and how you use them. Now when it comes to rendering, I've got a playlist with quick tips in there that talks all about how to render out videos. And if you're still a bit confused, then make sure you look at my other beginner guides. So lastly then, my challenge to you is to make this your own in some way, add some elements, maybe put a few rocks in there, an outside well if you want to follow my well tutorial. So really experiment, have some fun, and show off your results either in the comments below or on the Discord server. Lastly, if you've got any ideas for any other short courses that you'd like to see, then let me know. So thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing your work.